The number of children swallowing batteries has doubled over the past decade, according to the journal Pediatrics, and the batteries that they're ingesting are more dangerous than ever. Increased hospital visits appear to mirror the increase in devices in our homes that are using these button or disc batteries. As Kevin Land's Tom Hansen shows us, a Northwest Iowa couple has a tale of caution for other parents. <laughs> The bird's feathers. You're going to try to rip the feathers off. 19 month old Remy loves her books. And like many other toddlers, everything goes right in the mouth. In July, mom Megan and dad RJ could not have imagined the next chapter of their lives as Remy found the remote control for the ceiling fan. And she dropped the fan remote and the two batteries had popped out of it. And I went, Remy, bring them here. So she brought them over, and I had put the two batteries up here on our couch. Before Megan knew it, Remy had swallowed both the button batteries. They rushed her to the Sanford Hospital in Orange City, and then to Sioux Falls by ambulance. Remy's esophagus was starting to swell because the batteries were already corroded and stuck to one another. And he had to call a specialist in, and um, they had to push them back down to the stomach because they couldn't pull them out. And in doing that, there's um, the acid burned her throat. We know how dangerous these batteries can be. Pediatric surgeon Adam Gora was called in. He knew they had to act quickly because acid isn't the only danger these batteries pose. And the electrical charge can cause kind of an electrical burn within the esophagus. This, <clears throat> this electrical burn extends through the wall of the esophagus over time, and within about four hours you can have permanent damage. Dr. Gora was eventually able to move the batteries into Remy's stomach where he could surgically remove them. It was a total of seven and a half hours she was in the surgery and that was the scariest time I've ever, ever had. It was supposed to be 15 minutes and I think that's the whole like thought process is we thought this was going to be in and out. Like it was terrifying but we thought okay they're bringing us to Sioux Falls, we'll get it in and out and we won't be a problem, we'll go home that night. It would be eight days before Megan and RJ would hold Remy again. She spent weeks in the hospital. <laughs> Megan says as a parent, there's a certain amount of guilt that goes with seeing your child go through something like this. She just wants other parents to understand how dangerous button batteries can be for kids. It was a freak accident and I, I'm thankful we have our daughter and she's doing amazing, but it's still really hard as a parent to wonder if we could have done something different too. Like I kind of replay of like, maybe we should have put it up higher. Maybe I shouldn't have picked her up, but I can't go back, but I can try to prevent it from happening again or prevent another family going through what we had to go through. Yay, so big. Tom Hansen, yeah. Kelloland News. <laughs> That is scary. Now, Remy's prognosis is good. She is undergoing procedures to stretch her esophagus so that she can eat normal food. Dr. Gora says that it's much safer if the battery makes it all the way to the stomach. It can usually be passed through the body without surgery. Those kids, they're so quick. Well, child abuse is 